I'm Mrs. B and you've come to the Art Life YouTube channel. I am so glad you're here because today I'm going to teach you how to do a really funny, silly drawing task. I will guide you step by step how to draw this cow and teach you how to draw this upside down, flippity flop, inside out kind of drawing. We're going to learn all about what texture is and how to use it in an artwork and hopefully I'll inspire you to create an artwork similar to this one. Please make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel because it really helps me out and supports me to create more videos for you guys. You're going to need a few different drawing materials for this silly animal drawing task. Firstly, I'm working on plain white A3 cartridge. I like to do this task on a nice big piece of paper because it allows for space to create a really nice composition. You could also work on A4 if you prefer. You'll need a drawing pencil probably a rubber and a texture or fine liner, something dark and black to lock in your drawing. And then today I'm going to be coloring in with crayons. However, doing this task with coloring pencils is also fantastic. So grab your materials and let's set up. Today's lesson is all about texture. Texture is an art element. Art elements are the things that we put into our artwork to make it interesting or make it original. Today we're concentrating on the art element of texture, which essentially means how something feels. So it's using your sense of touch to be able to notice and see texture. Now there's lots of different textures and the types of words you could use to describe texture is fluffy, rough, hard, spiky, smooth, things like that. And today we're concentrating on the texture of animal's skin or fur, depending on the animal. And you can see here, I have some really cool paper and there's two ways to show texture. You can either show real or implied texture. Real texture is pretty obvious. It means that it actually feels textured. So if you were to touch a puppy's fur, it would actually feel fluffy or fuzzy or whatever texture it might be. Real texture. And the way you can show real texture is actually by sticking things like bark or cotton wool and things like that onto your page so it actually feels textured. Or you could imply it. What that means is it has the illusion of texture. It looks like it has texture, but it actually doesn't. If you were to touch it, it wouldn't feel textured at all. And you can show implied texture through the lines. For example, I could draw dog's hair with little lines like this. I could show texture by spiky lines like this. If you were to touch it, oh, oh that hurt my finger. It doesn't really, but it looks like it might. And another way is through patterns and photographs. Today, I was inspired by these pictures here, which are photographs of animals' texture. This one kind of looks like it could be a, a fox or some sort of furry animal. I've got feathers, feathery bird. I've got the texture of an alligator or a crocodile, kind of scaly, kind of bumpy, hard texture. And obviously these are some pictures as well of some snakes and giraffes and zebras and the patterns created within their skin. And today that's what we're focusing on, animal texture. And so that's going to be the basis of our picture today. But we're going to make it a little bit silly and mix things up a little bit. The very first step, of course, is choosing the animal you would like to draw. Now, if you're a teacher and you're doing a unit on farm animals, obviously you might restrict your students to just drawing a farm animal that they've learnt about, analysing the patterns on their coats and talking about the type of environment you might see them in on a farm. Maybe you're talking about a location like Africa and you could do African animals that you might see in a location like that. Maybe you're talking about pets, things like that. You could restrict the type of animals to your students or whoever you're doing this lesson with, or 
you could just leave it completely open-ended and say any animal, which is what I normally do within my classroom. Now this task I normally do with the grade sixes because I find that they really love it and think it's really fun, but it can be adapted to some younger years as well. Now the first step is actually getting some pictures of your chosen animal probably off the internet. Now you could choose to draw an animal from memory, but it's really tricky. It's actually extremely hard. And so I could also step you through how to draw one animal, but then you'll all be doing the exact same thing as me, which isn't showing a lot of creativity. So what I suggest is you choose an animal, grab a printout or a picture from the internet and have a go at drawing it from a photo. So I'm going to do that too, because I want to try to draw as realistic as possible. I'm going to try and draw as big as possible on my paper here. After you've found your photo, and just a little extra tip, if you are having trouble with your drawing or if you're working with younger students, maybe search up a cartoon of the animal that you're trying to draw. It will just simplify the task slightly. Now, once you have your photo, I suggest that you draw it really big. Do not draw it small. If you draw it tiny, trust me, this will not work out the way you're hoping. It means that we've made our main subject so tiny that the rest of our composition is actually quite boring. There's too much space around it. So when I say big, I mean as big as you can. All right, so I'm going to draw a cow today. I'm gonna to teach you step-by-step step how to draw a cow. You may choose to follow along with me or you may choose to have a go at drawing your own animal. But remember, I'm drawing it big. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is draw a nice big oval shape here. Notice I'm sketching. So you probably even really can't see my lines all that well because I've drawn them really lightly. If I draw them really dark, then I'm gonna have trouble down the track trying to get rid of these lines and rubbing them out, especially if I make a mistake. So I don't wanna do that. I wanna sketch nice and lightly. I'm gonna draw the top of the head of my cow, which is sort of like a semicircle shape over the top here. I'm gonna give him a couple of triangle ears. I'm gonna give him some fluff on his, on his head here and some horns. Now this is where his big nostrils are. I'm gonna give him little eyes. Now body-wise, it's gonna be a nice big body. So I'm gonna draw a straight line coming off the back here. Can you see that? And then draw a rounded line, kind of like a semicircle again, joining up. Notice how big my cow is. He's really big. Now this becomes the body here. And a cow has four big legs. One in front here. Another one in front here. I always um, draw the front legs first. And you'll notice with an animal, they don't actually go next to each other. They don't go one, two, three, four like that. There's one in front and then there'll be one sort of behind like that. I find that more realistic. And then he's got a cute little tail. Now, my next instinct would be to draw the cool wobbly kind of black dairy patches. But remember, we're not doing that. We're actually doing the opposite. We're going to draw these patches in the background. Then wherever you might find a cow, where might I find a cow? Hmm. On a farm? In a big meadow? We're going to draw that inside our cow. But that's a bit later. First, I'm going to lock in my picture with a black marker of some sort, a black texture, something dark and we're going to lock it in anything that you want to keep any mistake lines that you've made obviously i'm not going to go over those it's important to draw these lines nice and neatly because i can't actually rub out fine liner lines can i
Oh no! Duh! Don't do what I just did! <gasps> no! I used the rubber too soon and my ink hadn't dried yet. Oh no, he's got smudged eyes. Ah. See? Everyone makes mistakes, including the art teacher. Oh no! So now my job is to try to turn this mistake into a masterpiece. Oh, how can I do that? All right, maybe if I give him eyelashes, I can sort of disguise it, make it look like it's meant to be there. <laughs> silly me. But starting all over again would be a bit silly, wouldn't it? It'd be a waste of time and it wouldn't really use our creative brain. So I am really working on trying to fix up some of these lines that have smudged because of my rubber. Silly me. But don't let it defeat you. It actually makes you stronger. It makes you an even more effective artist if you can fix some of the mistakes you make because it, it happens to everyone. Adding fun details that make your work interesting. Okay, so once you have outlined your work and rubbed out all your grey lead, well done, you have completed step number two and it's time to move on to step number three, which is considering what the texture or pattern is of your animal. Then you're going to have a go at not doing it inside but outside where the background or the sky or the grass would normally live, you're going to do that pattern behind your animal. Now, some animals are very, very, very detailed. For example, a giraffe has these kind of cool shapes and spots and things like that. You'd have a go at doing them. Obviously, a cow has those sort of black patches, which I'll be doing in a minute. If you are doing a dog or a cat, you could always have a go at using implied texture, like I showed you earlier, by drawing little hairs like this and colouring lightly over the top to show the illusion of texture. If you've got a pig, you might do a pink pig with big mud splotches on him. So try to get creative with it so that the pattern is really interesting as best you can. But for me, it's pretty much just drawing fun little cow patches like this in my background all over. So notice in my background, I've really tried to stay in the lines, stay in the one direction while I've been coloring and have a go at doing my best at being as neat and careful as possible. Okay, well done with step number three. Now the lucky last and fourth step is to have a go and have a think about where my cow would normally be. You could do a farm scene, you could do a meadow scene. It's completely up to you, but you're actually going to color it inside your animal so when coloring as well i'm going to teach you a little bit about rendering layering and using multiple colors to make your artwork a little bit more interesting a little bit more realistic uh, and just that little bit extra effort so i'm going to start with my grass and what i'm doing now as i'm chatting is grabbing as many greens as i have even could grab some harmonious colors to green being a little bit of yellow as well now the reason i'm doing that is because i want a depth of color that means i want to create some shadow some light areas and a little bit of tone rather than just doing a flat green grass now if you're a little bit on the younger side you might not do this part of the task um might not 
make it as involved. But with the older kids, I would probably expect this level of colouring. So you can see here, I've got quite a few different greens. Doesn't matter if you don't have this many, I'm just gonna show you the idea. So I'm going to pretend that my sun is sort of coming in from this direction, from my cow's head down onto the body, onto what's going to be my grass. So I'm gonna start with a medium green and just colour some grass. I'm colouring right over the top of my drawing, right over the top of my flower. This is the meadow or the grass. Now, I could just colour this green, just continue to colour this green. There's nothing wrong with it. It would be a very beautiful artwork. But to take it to that next level, adding in different types of green, so different layers of shadow. Notice I'm going up and down like blades of grass um, vertically here. You can see I'm adding a different layer with my green here. I'm going to get darker and darker as I go down. Still colouring my medium green all the way down. Just going to do this, bit, this part for now just to demonstrate what I'm doing. So I've got my, my green. I've got another layer of green here I've done over the top. And then I can even get darker as I move down. Sometimes adding a harmonious colour like a yellow creates that extra layer and depth of colour as well. You could also press a little bit harder so that your colours are darker in different areas. You can see there, it's simple, just use a few different greens, but you can see that looks like it's getting darker and darker as I make my way down to the bottom of my cow's legs here. If I had have just colored plain green, that is what it would look like. As I said, nothing wrong with that, but which one looks a little bit more effective, do you think? I'd say that one. <laughs> but, but you can see the idea is drawing the environment on the inside of your animal. You could always go through as well and do little blades of grass. Again, adding some implied texture here. <laughs> now be careful, you don't want to go into the background though. So I want to stay within. You can go inside the different sections of the animal, but stay within the animal's body. Now I'm going to repeat this process when it comes to the sky, not just going to use one blue, I'm going to have a go at using lots of different blues. However, I want to do the sun first because I think that might um, offer a bit of extra colour for my picture. So I'll get some nice yellows and oranges. So now it's time for the sky. And as you can see here, I've got lots of different types of blues and I've even thrown in a bit of a purple. Purple being a harmonious color to blue. So it's just an extra depth of color, just like I did with the sun here. I added a bit of orange with the yellow. I added a bit of yellow with the green. I'm thinking about other colors that I can use other than just the most obvious. Now notice this time I'm colouring side to side in a horizontal direction because that's generally what happens with the sky. It goes from side to side like that. 
whereas the blades of grass come up and down vertically like that. So I'm not colouring very dark, I'm actually colouring quite softly. That's what helps to kind of layer these colours. If I press too hard, I wouldn't be able to layer my colours at all. And it would probably hurt my hand a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are able to see and understand the benefit of using multiple colors, harmonious colors with each other, layering color to create a more interesting section within your picture. It's not necessary, but it is very effective and I hope you've learned something today. So it's as simple as that. I really hope you learn a little bit about texture drawing and rendering and using multiple colors to layer and create a really interesting artwork. Thank you so much for joining me today. I encourage you to check out all my bank of videos. I've got a heaps down there for you to get creative and do some drawing. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.